How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific 3 Eastern, Sunday 3 Pacific 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Bally, 10 a.m. Pacific 1 Eastern, and Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And it is Thursday on the show. You know what that means. We got a lot to talk about here today. Boy, is there a lot going on as always. Later on this afternoon at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific, 7 Eastern. Well, it will be the WWE WrestleMania press event in Las Vegas at the T-Mobile Arena. And we're going to find out everything that's going on with WrestleMania in just a few hours. And we got more today. The Rock has gone full heel, which I was surprised about, but we'll talk about that here today. And what I expect to happen this coming afternoon. And when you will get all of the news about what happened, because we've got some, uh, well, I'll tell you about it after the break. We've also got news on the upcoming expected debut of Mercedes Monet. Tony Khan made his big announcement, which was, in fact, exactly as we said it would be. Boston, and uh, they're doing the CM Punk deal with Mercedes. And so we'll tell you about when that's going to be and what they did yesterday. Yesterday's Dynamite was awesome. If you've not seen the show, I would see the show because it was one of the best Dynamites ever. Fantastic show. And uh, we'll tell you about that later on in the program as well. More on Scott Demore and TNA. We've also got some rating notes for you. And uh, Steve Mongo McMichael is set to receive... One of the great honors of his life, he will be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame as part of its 2024 class. He is currently battling ALS, and uh, very happy to see that he will be going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Lots to talk about today. Mike Sempervivi uh, returns. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. special tour of Figure Four Weekly Headquarters, as promised. Today I will be accompanied by my assistant Vincenzo, so let's get moving. Hey, don't worry about it. Today's a special day, I'll drive. Today's going to be a good day, so let's not F anything up, okay? Now, I'd like to tell everybody, I just want to give a short speech on the way to uh, the compound here today, and that is that we are going through very tough economic times right now. Right, Vince? It's a time of uh, stock market crashing, the yen is devalued, a time of woe and want. and. Many of you watching this right now, for all I know, are unemployed. But the good thing is, and I always like to look on the bright side, as Vince is well aware, the good news is that for every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. And the silver lining is that Figure Four Weekly is doing great. It's a huge success right now. Subscriptions are up, quality is down, Profit margins are skyrocketing. Things are going very well. So the one thing is that I don't want to make it seem like money is everything because money cannot buy happiness. But what it can buy is enormous houses. And that makes me happy. So we will be going 
to see my enormous house, the Figure Four Weekly Compound. And uh, that's where we're heading right now. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semperbivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Kind of sad I'm not going to be here tomorrow to to revel in everything. I'm sure your heart is broken. Actually, it kind of is. It is broken a little bit here. Some of the folks on the chat have just, man, they're doubling down. You're all going to get screwed at that press conference today. You're not going to get Cody at WrestleMania. Well, you know what's funny? Well, we are going to get Cody at WrestleMania. Cody is going to finish his story at WrestleMania this year. And yes, DJ, yes, Lenny has been saying that all day today. Yes. He did not uh, learn from his lost quarters to doubt me in situations like this. Mm. But that's okay. He can apologize tomorrow. Well, one thing is for sure, whether Cody Rhodes finishes his story or not at WrestleMania, there is a significant amount of Dwayne washing going on. Oh, we'll get to Dwayne here in a moment. In, in both the creative end and the corporate end of this business. Lenny's doubling down here that it's going to be Cody versus uh, Seth. Man, can we just make this bet now, brother? I mean, it's only four hours. You only got to wait four hours to lose these quarters this time, dude. And he can apologize tonight because... Well, I don't know for sure, but what I'm trying to get here is uh, tonight, if I have my way, and if I don't have my way, you'll get the exclusive tomorrow, Mike. All right. And by the way, can you switch to the other channel? Sure. It's a horrible, we got a horrible buzz or something on that channel right there. But anyway, now he's not going to hear my announcement. Oh, well. Tonight at 4 o'clock Pacific 7 Eastern, it is the WWE press conference for WrestleMania at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. And for those of you unaware, we, in fact, do have a host that lives in Las Vegas. And that Mm -hmm. man is our own Filthy Tom Lawler. And Filthy Tom Lawler has not only agreed to go to this afternoon's event... But he will be there as press. Is he paying the money? No, he is there as press. He is representing WrestlingObserver.com at this press conference. So he is going to get all of the scoops. And I'm going to try and get him on the Brian and Vinny show at the beginning of the show tonight, 9 Pacific, midnight Eastern. If not, you'll get the scoops tomorrow. It becomes on this show, Mike. But he's going to tell us everything that happens when Cody gets added Somehow to the uh, World uh, WWE World Heavyweight Championship, whatever the title Roman has, I believe I'll tell you right now. I believe it's going to be a uh, some sort of of three way tournament type deal, similar to uh, WrestleMania Ten. It's going to be uh, the Rock and Roman Reigns, and uh, they'll either I presume they'll say Cody Rhodes will face the winner, uh, but uh, Cody Rhodes and The Rock, or I'm sorry, and Roman Reigns. So how they do this, I don't know. I don't think they'll do two two matches on one show. I presume one one match will main event the uh, the Saturday show. The other match will main event the Sunday show. Yes, that would require Roman Reigns working twice. So, uh, which happens as often as you working on a Friday. The Rock had a message for some of Cody's fans on Thursday. Ahead of the press conference in Vegas, Rock appeared on the Pat McAfee show, addressed the drama surrounding the WrestleMania 40 main event. During the interview, he referred to some of Rhodes' fans as Cody crybabies. I have known Cody for a long time, he said. He's a buddy of mine. 
the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and my old man, Rocky Johnson. They were boys. They tag-teamed together down in Florida. We used to go down to the Rhodes house a lot when I was growing up, so we're tight in that way. I love Cody. I love his passionate fans. Then there's the other passionate fans of Cody, and they're called the... What? Cody Crybabies. That's what they're called. It was the Cody Crybabies. These are grown-ass men. Oh, Cody had to finish his story. The Rock said, at the end of the day, look, you've got the Cody Crybabies, you have the Cody fans, and you have Cody himself. There's a clear distinction between the three. But The Rock says this. Those Cody Crybabies, the ones for every 10 tweets, they're shoving a chicken McNugget in their mouth. For every 20 tweets, they're shoving two chicken McNuggets up their butt. The Rock says this. All you got to do is sit back, know your role, shut your mouth, enjoy the ride. The Rock is going to take your candy on. Try not to get Dom mad at me. Hashtag that. Hashtag shut your BAs up. Hashtag Cody crybabies. (laughs) You know what's funny is, uh, I don't know. Last night, my presumption was whatever they did tonight was going to be done to try to get The Rock over as, like, a baby face. But, uh, you know, clearly he's happy being hated. That's what it sounded like to me. Hey, as long as you're not paying attention to anything else besides the creative to WrestleMania and the WrestleMania event, that's all he cares about right now because as he's talking about fans shoving chicken nuggets in their mouth and how many of them they're doing that, He's the one who opened up his pockets and shoved $30 million of stock into it and jumped on a board of a a place that, well, needed some Dwayne washing. Not that I'm really trying to push that phrase or anything like that, but again, we'll see what happens tonight at this absolute spectacle of a press conference they got coming up here in Vegas. And obviously there is paid access at this event where people may be asking questions and We'll see how all of this stuff plays out, but bottom line is he's there to serve two purposes. It is to try to distract you and to try to help right the ship and become Ari and Mark and certainly his good friend Nick Khan's, you know, Vince McMahon now. You know, the face of WWE, one of the faces of TKO going forward now is going to be everyone's favorite, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And then obviously him inserting himself into the creative aspect of things, getting his WrestleMania match against Roman Reigns. So we'll see how these things collide tonight at this press conference, and we'll see what happens moving forward. But whatever you do, don't look over here. You know, advert your eyes over here. Just worry about what's happening with Cody and all these crybaby fans, and will he finish his story or not? Well, I think it's possible also that, uh, I don't know. Here, Listen, here's my thing, Okay. If you're going to do the uh, the Rock and Roman Reigns and you're going to do, you know, Cody and the winner or whatever, here's the thing. If if what you need is, is Roman is the guy wrestling twice. So he needs to be a heel and the other two need to be baby faces because you want to have a, a Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns situation in that Rock Roman match where they're both hated heels I don't think you want that. I think that what you want is Roman Reigns to be the heel, Rock to be the baby face, and then Cody to be the baby face on the other day. I mean, I I don't know, man. That guy's got a lot of confidence. This Rock's got a lot of confidence. If he's going to go all in on being a heel for his last match and go heel versus heel with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, a WrestleMania traveling yeah, but- hardcore crowd. Do you think it'll be his last match? And I don't know what his movie project schedule is, but think about it. You still got a whole lot to be hashed out when it comes to the table and it comes to that part of the storyline where it comes to will we get Tamatanga come in? Will we get what is happens with Jimmy and Jay, especially if they wrestle at this event? You know, will The Rock talk about, you know, maybe they should be back together? What's going to happen with Solo? Will there be an ascension out of him? How does he play into this? So I think there's a lot of moving parts that way as well, too, where do we see The Rock one more time, maybe in a tag situation where it is all family going at each other at some point? Maybe that, not only does he get his last WrestleMania match against Roman, maybe that's when you get 
Saudi's money being ponied up or something like that, and he works that event as well. DJ says, wrestling twice what a baby face would do. Well, yeah, this is this is how I book this today, everybody. I don't know if this is going to happen, but this is how I book this. And I'll tell you after the break, Observer Live. What was your reaction to that? Because that's something where I was like, this is crazy that this is happening right now. I'd love to call that a behind the scenes moment, but it wasn't. It was right there wide out in the open. But that is one of my favorite off the wall things to happen in wrestling during during my entire career, mostly because of who who that lady is. Lisa is her name and she is an absolute badass i mean there are a lot of big burly men that are security guards and uh you, you know protect the wrestlers over there at wwe but i think every single one of them would agree that lisa was absolutely the toughest i mean she wasn't the biggest by any means but man she was not afraid to just dive into something and hearing her tell that story afterwards about knowing that's Rob Gronkowski and he's eight times her size, but having no hesitation, regardless of who it was, to put her health out of the way and, and dive in there to protect us, just mauling Gronk right from the get-go. Oh, my goodness. What a bet. Like, think about that for a second. Think about who Rob is and what he's capable of and physically what he can do. And, and this small lady just – Diving in there and jacking them up. That was the funniest thing in my head the whole time. I was like, I can't wait to just destroy Rob later for this about how she jacked them up. But uh, we we let her know that it was kind of, I mean, bringing Rob in was kind of a, a last minute thing. I had heard that I was going to be going over in the Andre and I was super thrilled about that. I think they had kind of built that storyline to that over a course of maybe like a month leading in. And, you know, we we're trying to think of ways to punch it up. And we had this idea to bring Rob in. Rob always wanted to do something with me over at uh, WWE. And this was just the perfect time. So it just made sense, but it was just kind of thrown together last minute, which is crazy for these outside athletes and celebrities they're not used to just this entire thing, this global spectacle being dumped on their lap with like a half an hour heads up or day of kind of thing. And yeah, we, we, we put it together that day and it was so last second. No one told security. No one told anyone else that was associated with the show. And yeah, then that's what happens. So I don't know what they're going to do, but this is the easiest solution. And it actually makes all of this make sense. So what is Roman Reigns' heat? Well, the heat is he's never there. He never wrestles. He misses strings of pay-per-view events. He's almost never on television. Seth works 10 times as hard, and Roman makes 10 times as much. Roman makes all this money to never wrestle. All these people bringing up, well, why would he wrestle twice in one weekend? That's a bit. That's the point. He wouldn't. Okay. So let's say that they've been building up for a year, Roman Reigns and Cody, and then Rock signs a deal, and he wants WrestleMania. Well, how do you how do you make this work? Well, 
what doesn't work is Cody wins the Royal Rumble, challenges Roman Reigns, and then The Rock shows up, and he challenges Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns says, fine, I'll wrestle both of you. Yes, that doesn't make any sense. So what is the alternative? Well, the alternative is what I think they're going to do, which is Cody wins the Royal Rumble, guaranteeing him a championship match. He faces off with Roman Reigns, he tells Roman Reigns, I am coming for the title, but not at WrestleMania. I will step aside. The Rock shows up. You go to a press conference. You go to a signing whatever. And you make it official that Roman Reigns is facing The Rock at WrestleMania. You do this. You've got 10,000 fans there. They're all rabidly chanting for Cody, as they have done all weekend, because they want Cody Rhodes in the match. And after Roman has signed the contract to face The Rock, then Cody's music hits, and Cody comes out and he says, Now that you have signed, I want you to know that you are also wrestling me at WrestleMania, because I am contractually obligated to a championship match at WrestleMania for winning the Royal Rumble, and I am choosing you. Roman doesn't get to choose to wrestle two nights. He doesn't want to wrestle two nights. He's forced to wrestle two nights because he agreed to face one guy, and then the other guy walked in and said, you know what, you have to face me because I won the Rumble. And that's it. Wait a second. But yes. Cody said on SmackDown when he, right before he hugged The Rock... And, and and stumbled and cried and mugged his way to the back. Um, he said it wouldn't be at WrestleMania, right? He didn't uh, he, say that. He lied. And not one fan is going to be angry about it. They're going to be happy that Roman Reigns was screwed because the entire storyline is that every time Roman Reigns shows up every four months, they say it on every show, everybody shows up to interfere on your behalf. You guys screw Sammy, if we're you screw this. Jay, you screw Drew, you screw Cody. Well, you know what? Now you got screwed, brother. Well, I am wrestling at WrestleMania. If we're doing it this way, why doesn't Rock just then trump Roman's head of the table thing by going, I'm the head of the company, and I'm here now, and I'm here to come back and, and take Because that's way. a stupid think... storyline. He whole... should challenge him for the beads and the title. So this all of this is stupid, Brian. It's going to work all out of it's tonight. Stupid. It, well, look, you and Lenny can do the show together tomorrow. No, I, I don't even know why I'm doing the show tomorrow. But like, it, it's it's a completely ridiculous thing, and how they a got to this point is completely lie. ridiculous. And they could have put some things into place because they knew this was going to be the case. It's hard for me to believe that in December they, they didn't know this and certainly before the Royal Rumble where you could have done this in another way. I, I To me at least and have it work out a lot better than than it is i mean just again this roman and co roman and, and rock does not have to happen for the title nobody cares about them in the title this whole thing was about cody and at some point again they're going to push it too far even though things have worked out for them from a business point of view every time they've put a twist into things for whatever reason that that's happened to be so we'll see how this thing plays out. But again, it just to me, Lenny is a the lot smartest is guy stupid. I've ever met who is so Why doesn't stubborn. Lenny come on today and host. He the show? should. All right. He Lenny, said, come on. He call says, in. so now the man who has had this company by the balls for four years is suddenly going to get bulldozed at mania. Have you never watched wrestling? Yes. That's the point of building up a heel. That's the point of building up a bad guy in a movie. Oh, yeah, for the whole movie, they get one over, and then finally at the end, they get theirs. That's the whole point of making a heel. Coming from a guy what do you think who the end game of Roman is? watches movies. Just to win forever and then retire? No, Roman is going to get his in the end. Brian is Roger Ebert at, at best making Valley of the Dolls. Oh, man, I can't believe you guys. Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. I cannot believe what I'm Ugh. hearing. Well, anyway, that's this afternoon. Can't wait to... Uh, can't wait to hear from Filthy. Hopefully tonight. I'm going to get the scoop. And, and you Your guys aren't going to gonna know what happened until 9 o'clock tonight when Filthy comes on to report on it. 9 o'clock tonight, he's coming on to report on it. Uh, yes, 9 Pacific, midnight Eastern. Brian midnight and Vinny Eastern. show. 
Great. I should so, confirm that. So he will not be on in tomorrow with me, though? No, of course he will. Okay. We're only having him on for like five minutes. Like, hey, what happened, brother? Everything we already knew? Okay, thanks. He's a reporter. I need to put him on the air to report. Do you understand, Mike? Mm. He can give all the details and backstage scoops. You know what? We, we might as well start now at this website. They're showing it on Peacock, no? Yes, they are yes. showing it on Peacock. They are showing it on Peacock, yes. Yes, and YouTube. Mm. Yeah, yeah, all they're gonna they're gonna to they're this. gonna rent out T-Mobile and show this on Peacock and YouTube just to screw you and make you not want to watch WrestleMania, Lenny. That's their plan. Hey, let's talk about some other stuff here. I got more. Tony Khan did in fact announce a special big business episode of Dynamite for Boston. Not Big Breakfast. With a show expected to feature the AEW debut of Mercedes Monet. That would be Jordan Oliver. Khan promised a big announcement. Yeah, I can't help but notice. I was on I was on Twitter yesterday, and all these other people were talking about how they called this from day one, taking all this credit. Mean? Have I not told you everything that's going to happen with Mercedes Monet from day one? I told you this months ago. She was going to AEW. They were going to do the CM Punk thing. I told you about Boston two weeks ago. That was going to be the announcement. But, of course, as always... I get no credit, just like this one here with The Rock and Roman Reigns and Cody. Anyway, the big business graphic had dollar signs uh, in the word Boston. Likely a reference to Monet's legit boss moniker. <laughs> Did I tell you how much I hated that gimmick? <laughs> the legit boss. Because she wasn't. She was not the legit boss. <laughs> Vince McMahon was the legit boss. He was. Not Mercedes Monet. If she were the legit boss, she wouldn't have walked out over those tag titles. She would have just done whatever she wanted to do. She was a legit boss. Oh, the fun I'm going to have with this one. Oh, the mentions. So anyway, that's what's going on. You guys ready for uh, more CM Punk teases? For Mercedes? What do you think we'll have? Like a Mercedes getting destroyed? Maybe Jungle Boy will get smashed onto a Mercedes? Real glass? A lot of different ideas. Let's, Except let's, he's not in AEW right now. Yeah, let's see if uh, old Jungle Jack there can get past Gabe Kidd, who... Uh... Are you kidding me? I like old Gabe Kidd, but Jungle Jack's gonna smash that guy. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. If he couldn't smash Punk, what's he gonna do with a psychopath like Gabe Kidd? What do you mean he couldn't smash Punk? What are you talking about? You telling me he smashed Punk backstage? Is that what Nothing you're happened. Me? Nothing happened? It was immediately broken up. Don't listen Nothing to that. Happened. Who was that guy that was that? Happened? Who was the, who was the uh, the rapper that was like it was blood and guts and violence and blood squirting everywhere? <laughs> what was who he kid? talking about? DJ Who Kid. Okay, Who Kid. That's not what happened, brother. <laughs> Literally nobody said that but you, and there were a lot of people there. Didn't he call out the big Polynesian brother keeping peace? You tell me that didn't happen. That Smojo no, no. didn't keep things together. No, That's Dave true. did That's not talk about blood says. squirting everywhere and and all that. He did not. Come on, hmm. stop that. All right. So anyway, she'll be debuting with uh, AW and Naomi's back in WWE. That's what. Do you happened. think her first feud is a uh, right right to Tony Storm? I don't know, man. If I know AW, no, she'll start with like Red Velvet. And work her way up over the course of four years. <laughs> so I think it's going to happen. <laughs> She's got to face both Renegade sisters. She's got to get times. ranked, brother. That's, that's exactly. That's a lot of red velvet she's got to beat to get ranked. <laughs> you got to whip a lot of cakes to, to get to that point. No, I am not going to talk about rankings here. I will not talk about... I tried not to talk about him yesterday, but Dave's the one that brought it up. Mm-hmm. Boy, he gets really huffy during his reviews there, doesn't he? Very We've huffy. got to the point where I've had people explain to me that the number one ranked person is not the same as the number one contender. <laughs> Whatever. I don't Bad care about these Brian. rankings. Bad faith, Bad faith. I've got, I've got bigger fish to fry. Like NXT doing 650,000 viewers in a .19. Ah, uh, that's the haddock. Yeah, .19 which is up 5.6 from last week. Third best since November 14th. These kids like this show, no. and they should have. They should have, because that show was excellent. I tell you what, all you small brain people out there, you're waiting for WWE SmackDown to become the number one rated show on all of television. 
that's going to happen at some point this year. Dave predicts that. A lot of people do. I am waiting for 2025 when on the CW, NXT is the number one rated show on all of television. I want that Bro, to I'm happen. telling you. The combination, that's my prediction for next year. Combination of NXT and CW, it's going to be the hottest show on TV. Let me tell you. Be big. Back in a moment, Absurd Life. We've almost reached the pinnacle of the tour, but this is one of the most important things. This is the computer. This is the workstation where I do the majority of the actual physical part of putting figure four together. I do the writing here, the editing here, of course, the phone calls, um, even the uh, microphone here when we used to do Wrestling Observer Live, which has since died. And uh, in fact, I better put the uh, screensaver on here so this doesn't get burned in the screen. But Putting the newsletter together, people understand, is it's a lot of hard work and dedication, like two to three hours per week sometimes I have to spend on it. And, um, hold on a second. Figure four, who's this? Carl Thrillo? Yeah. yeah hey, 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 listen, can I, can I call you back? I'm, I'm doing something here right now. My fridge? Yes, running. Hello? Anyway, um, this is, uh, like I said, computer, got the TV here, this is pretty much the place. This is going to be a quick tour of the trophy room. This is actually my trophy case, it's made of mahogany, very expensive. But what is worth far more than the case itself is what is inside, and that is the medals from the various sports and the accomplishments that I've achieved during my lifetime. This first drawer here is my gymnastics medal. Here, I got uh, state and such. These are my Taekwondo medals. These down here, amateur wrestling medals. And down here are the 26 medals that I won in the five kilometer walk down to the Boff Landing over the course of the past five years. And, um, you know, I realize that uh, I'm a four sports superstar right here. And some people, you know, it might, uh, might bother them that they haven't had such achievements in their life. But I think that the whole point is that you can achieve anything. You know, if you can make a great pie, you can win the pie eating contest at the uh, Puyallup Fair. And, uh, I don't know. Hell, if you can eat a good pie, you might win the pie eating contest as well. So there's there's achievement in this life for everybody. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Hey, up on the board, old DJ does a preview for the show every day. And he says, I've got two questions here regarding big business. Does it mean more than just Mercedes? And what does Mercedes truly mean business-wise for AEW? Well, these are excellent questions. So here's... I love talking about Mercedes. Listen, we don't know what she means for business, okay? If you, if you ask her rabid fans, she's a massive, massive mover, okay? They will point out, well, she did really high quarters here, really high quarters there. But uh, she was mover never... Mover and shaker. She was never 
the biggest mover in the company. She was never as big a mover as Becky. She was never as big a mover as whoever. These are just facts that people will get mad at me about. As far as like selling tickets, we don't know. Yes, when she was announced for that New Japan show in San Jose, they they sold out after she was announced, okay? To sell out, they had to sell like 900 tickets. Now, could she have sold 5,000 tickets? I don't know, because it was only set up to sell 2,000. Now, granted, if they were on track to selling 2,000 tickets, they probably could open up more seats, but they didn't, okay? So what we know is being announced for a New Japan show in the U.S. for the first time, having not wrestled in a long time, she moved less than 1,000 tickets, okay? Now, that was a New Japan show in San Jose. How many tickets is she going to move for this show in Boston? I don't know. Would she sell out? Possibly. Could be. But the fact of the matter is, we don't know, regardless of what people think they know and want to believe, okay? We will find out soon enough. Tickets will go on sale, and we will see how they move. Will she move business like CM Punk? I would be incredibly surprised. Incredibly surprised. But I suppose anything is possible. What's the date of that show? Were you not paying March attention? 13th, March 13th. Sure. So at that March point, 13th. Not only, though, maybe also he, when he was asking about the big business, what will it mean? Will it possibly mean Okada? Because you could double your, your, your night there if word starts to leak out that possibly Okada could show up there as well, too. That, that could be a thing if he ends up happening to sign with AEW, and that's part of Tony's grand plan of big business and something that's going to shake up the industry forevermore. Well, here's my thought. Yes, he's the rainmaker. Yes, there's a dollar sign. Absolutely, positively, would I not debut them on the same day? I wouldn't either. Because why? But but if you're not moving any tickets in a big building that you set up, eh. Because that's well, you tease too. them both. Then here's the th- yeah. Because here's the thing: if they're not moving tickets, because let's say they look TD Garden's a big building, I don't know what they're going to decide to to you know lay it out for. But let's say it's nine thousand people, ten thousand people, or nine thousand. Let's even say nine thousand, and it does like fifty five hundred, and you've just invested in Mercedes and all like. Would you want to do more? Granted, that would be a lot bigger crowd than what they've been doing with other things, but it's like for the rent of the building, for the for as big of an event as you want to make this, and as as much as you're hyping it up to be, maybe you might have to do that. I mean, I'm saying, I'm just saying, if you've already signed and you have to do something like that, at least you could. Well, from what I understand, he's not signed, and if he is signed, I mean, build up two shows. Not I mean, just yeah, well, one. That's, that, that would be optimal, yes, obviously. And, it, and it's not even it's not even like building up two shows, but it's also why would you split the news? You know, you've got Mercedes. You, she should be the if, highlight of the show. She should be the focus of the show. She should be the big story coming out of the show. If you have two of them debut, well, you're splitting. But the they've done that before. Didn't Adam Cole debut on a night where who was the other debut that night? It was uh, Brian Danielson. Brian Daniels. But yes, they did do that once. So they did do it already. They also again, once there was I'm also once a this. reverse battle royal. I don't ever want to see it again. Yeah, but, but we did. Been, yes, it, we did because promoters will do stupid things over and over again, like rankings. I'm just saying. Don't get me started. If he does happen to be signed, and she's not moving numbers, she's not big business. That you know, if he is signed, maybe you go ahead and actually pull the trigger that way again. I, I'm very interested to see when they do put them on sale, what the building is actually scaled for, because again, maybe Dom can jump in with exactly what the number is, but it's not like TD gardens, a small building. And even if you, you know, again, what's Dom know about anything? Well, he can look at Wikipedia, but if I can do that, if you don't scale the thing, you know, properly and you end up, you know, really being underwhelming, you know, it's not going to be good. Well, all I know is the uh, pre-sale starts on Saturday. So uh, probably on Monday, 
will have an idea about how this thing is doing thus far. And granted, quite frankly, I mean, they haven't even done a tease for her yet. So, you know, That's they'll true. sell what they sell on the first day, then they'll start teasing, and we'll see if they start uh, start moving Yeah, but, I, I, well, I mean, well, I guess so. I guess so, because there are going to be a lot of WWE people that really have no idea AEW exists and probably had absolutely no idea that New Japan ever existed, that is not as deep in the bubble as a lot of people are, that, you know, may see these ads and may see teases of, of this Mercedes Monet who just, look, just, look, just looks just like Sasha Banks, and maybe they want to uh, get it for the show. John Dom's at 19000 Five hundred and eighty. That is a big building. Twenty thousand. That is a big, big building. So you know, again, you want to get a lot of people in there because acoustically, again, if that thing is is small and scaled small, it's not going to end up looking or sounding very good for what is supposed to be a huge, massive night and debut. Uh, we may get a WrestleMania twenty twenty five announcement today, guys. If you're uh, interested, oh, yeah. at the press conference. Anyway, a couple of notes from the uh, show last night. It was awesome. You should watch Wait, it. That's all your. That's the only way you're leaving that thing. Not a singles match. Not a. Not any other tease. What are you talking about? You're probably going to get a WrestleMania location. WrestleMania 2025 location. That's that's okay. That's a okay. Thank you. You just slipped that one in there after I got like, and then move was going to move on. I yes, I'm moving on really here. I got to get going. We got like five minutes to talk about Dynamite, <laughs> and it should have like an hour. Hey, you know what? It'll be an hour tonight on the Brian Vinny Show. Dynamite reviews. All right, the hell with this. Listen, this Go Dynamite ahead. was unbelievable. Is it Friday yet? With one exception, and that was the uh, women's match I was not uh, blown away by at all. But the Hangman versus Swerve match was great. 30-minute time limit draw. Just one of those matches where they announce it's 25 minutes, and you're like, 25 minutes already? Felt like about five. Just fantastic. And then uh, Swerve hit the JML driver. They rang the bell at the two count to signal the time limit draw. They went a little bit over, but uh, I'll let Dave give you the exact time. So anyway, afterwards, the fans are furious. Swerve, who was a total babyface, gets the mic, and he says... Doesn't have to end this way. Let's do five more minutes. And then Hangman, Hangman says, Tonight you had to beat me to become the number one contender, which was the wrong choice of words because that was untrue. But you did not. You will not be the world champion. He leaves. And then, of course, they announce it will be a three-way at Revolution. And you know who's known for having great three-way matches? Samoa Joe. Hangman has gone total heel. He's got the heel mustache. He actually shaved the beard, so now he's just got the big frowny handlebar mustache on his face. He's an excellent heel. We had uh, Tony Storm in Red Velvet, which was not good. Uh, I got nothing more to say. Tony won, so Red Velvet will not be getting a championship match in her unranked state. We had Moxley, Danielson, and Claudio versus Hechicero, Mascara Dorada, and Volador Jr. This was just, like, wild. Wild! And Claudio hit the foul A on Hechicero, booted him in the nuts, got the pin. The CMLL BCC feud is going to continue and uh, presumably culminate at a show at Arena Mexico. So Brian Danielson will get to accomplish another one of his dreams. Maybe he'll even put his hair on the line eventually. He's got those braids. Tony Khan made his announcement. Jericho and Takeshita. So uh, Takeshita tried to kill him. Failed. Drop kicked his head into the middle rope. Almost killed him. Gave him a blue thunder bomb off the top rope. Smashed his head on the canvas. Almost killed him. But then finally, uh, he put Jericho in the walls. And uh, for those of you on, uh, you know, we're trying to check, do they drop the arm or not? Yes, they dropped Jericho's arm twice. But he got it up on the third try, only to be dragged to the middle. And he tapped out to his own move. Takeshita beats Jericho. So that was a very good match. And then the main event, Darby and Sting versus Big Bill and Ricky Starks. I will say this. Ricky Starks did not beat Sting. But they wanted you to think that that was the finish because they did a deal there at the end where 
Darby and Big Bill went through a table outside, and Ricky is in the ring, and Sting goes for the splash, and Ricky yanks the buckle off, and my God, this Sting hit this metal buckle right here in his chest so hard, I thought his heart was going to come out of his back. He falls down. Ricky spears him. Everybody thought it was over. One, two, he kicked out! And then he caught him with a death drop off a spear attempt. Sting pins him. Sting and Darby are the AW Tag Team Champions. And then the Young Bucks. What pros? Wearing all white head to toe. They hit the ring. They beat the hell out of Sting, Darby Allen, and Sting's sons. Darby Giggs. The Young Bucks have blood all over their white suits. Which, by the way, apparently on uh, Rampage Friday, they got a match. They make their ring entrance in the white suits covered in blood as they come down to the ring. And they beat these guys down, and they left them for dead. This angle had tons of heat. And uh, when this show was over, I was like, man, this promotion is hot right now. So now we just got to follow up because that was a hot Hot show leading to revolution. And I thought it was great. It's okay to say, though, they're not hot right now. But it's shows it like It felt this. hot, I said. Felt! There are shows like this, though, that will continue to crank the dial up and keep the heat up for them when they happen to be this good and this pretty much complete of a show. You know, there's a lot I liked. I know we're pushing up against Hey, 5,000 right people here. That's good. 5,000 people, yeah. And again, the most of the matches they put on are good. There are some little things that I didn't like. Don Callis putting hands on Takeshita. Don't put your hands on your talent unless you're going to turn on him. He doesn't need to be slapped into motivation. We've already seen this with Fletcher and and Callis. We don't need to see it with Hobbs and Takeshita. They're big stars. And how the match ended up, that's what you wanted to see was Takeshita get that little bit more. And he did that. Adam Page as a heel, the transitioning to him as a heel, and him being able to say true things, like you're cheering a guy for dancing because he dances cool, and, and you know this other guy because he looks cool walking to the ring. The guy's never beaten me and like broke into my house, and now I gave myself to you and you're turning on me. This is a perfect setup for Adam Page to turn heel, and this is a big moment for him too because he's not great on the mic or anything like that big chance here to really kind of change himself, change his image, and move himself forward. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Thank you for coming, huh? Let's enjoy the Lucha Libre class. When you go down, help yourself pushing your knees to, to the back. So one more time. Pretty much the same. First the knees and after the hands. So we go over arms head and we go. Okay? This is one. Oh, this is the other. <laughs> I know, I know, but he's like that. <laughs> I know, but he's like that. Everybody stay there. Okay, one, two, three. Nice. nice. One more to this one. One, better. Let's do better. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay, so now put your head in and your back is rolling in the in the ring, okay? Okay. After hold your knees. One, two, three. Get get in your
Back at the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Only three hours away from this big WWE press conference. I know you'll all be watching on the uh, on the Peacock. And uh, if I have my way, we'll have old Filthy Tom on tonight, 9 Pacific, midnight East. In other Good. words... T- tell him, make sure that he's on tonight with you and make sure he goes and gets all the information that he can because he can talk about it tomorrow because i don't want to watch this thing wow uh, i really don't well he'll be there to talk about it and uh we'll talk about it tonight as well and then uh i need uh lenny's apology uh you can send your quarters to p.o box 426 woodenville washington 98072 that is post office box 426 Woodenville, Washington, <laughs> 98072. I will accept quarters oh. from uh, anybody who would like to uh, apologize to me. I will use them to buy my children toys out of the machine at Safeway. What about Bitcoin? No. 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 Uh. MGF coin, you're allowed to... Uh... No. No, no, please no. Yeah. I don't think that exists anymore anyway. That's what, what are they going to do I with all these machines? Like at the Wawa, where it's like there's a Bitcoin machine now. Like, really? What are you going to do with it? I just, I don't know. It's crazy. Uh, Lenny's going to try and disappear till Monday. I won't forget, Lenny. Don't worry. I won't forget. Oh, by the way, during the D'Angelo skit, the, the family coming back to the uh, the Northeast, I love that. They actually had a Wawa. That was very authentic. So there you go. Adriana Rizzo, she's on my side now. Scrotalis here, which is his actual name. Scrotalis. I haven't used that many coins since the last time I went to a strip club. You go to a strip club where there's quarters? Making it hail. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.